you're listening to the SAS Says Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Rocha, also known as SAS. I identify as a woman, a wife, and a mother. That should tell you a lot already. And over the last few years, I've learned the value of talk therapy. I have seen how my inner work not only enhances my own well-being, but also my marriage, my parenting, my relationships. And in fact, you wouldn't be hearing this right now if it weren't for the work I've done. My mission is to debunk the misconceptions and stigmas around what therapy is and who it's for. Let's normalize working on our mental health and seeking help when needed. We've all heard of self-care, self-help, and self-love, but do you often wonder how to actually make it all happen? I do. You'll hear strategy-based conversations with professionals, as well as inspiring and validating stories from women who are just like you and me. Think of this podcast as the weekly therapy sessions you didn't know you needed. With a dash of sass, a lot of vulnerability, and me, relentlessly asking, but how? Hello, hello. Welcome to the show. Today, I am joined by the Holly Marie Haynes. Holly helps female entrepreneurs create simple, scalable offers and systems to grow to multiple six figures without relying on the social algorithm. An industry expert and featured Thrive and Entrepreneur.com author with a 20-year business consulting background with Fortune 500 companies, Holly runs her strategic coaching business, the Crush the Rush Planner Company, and hosts the Top 100 Crush the Rush podcast while raising her twin daughters with her husband in Columbus, Ohio. Okay, so we discuss how to create a life priorities-based business, how to scale your business in just eight to 10 hours a week. We talk about Holly's famous theme days, her antisocial strategy, mindset, developing your why for what you're doing and how that why can change over time and just so much more. Truly, this episode is jam-packed with tools, strategies, and pearls of wisdom. All right, here's Holly. Hey, Holly. So nice to meet you. Thanks for being here with me today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I've followed your work for some time now. And uh, I don't know, I'm a little, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous because I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like um, partly... It's so silly, but like partly, oh my gosh, there you are. <laughs> it's like, wow, there you are in real life almost. Um, and partly because I think I'm about to be called out on a lot of my own BS. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a real person. I'm yeah. sitting in my office. Uh, yeah, we all start at the same place. So, all right. So first of all, Crush the Rush. It's absolutely epic name. How did you come up with that name? Uh, You know, it's funny. I thought of it in the shower. It was actually like a free group that I ran of just how to like time block and get your mornings back. And it just kind of stuck. I had no idea that it was going to turn into what it is now. Like no idea. And I've even contemplated, I'm like, do I really want my business to be called crush the rush? (laughs) But like, it's just stuck. So we're just going with it. Like it was just yeah. random thoughts in the shower at, you know, 6 a.m. is where it came from. Well, it's very catchy. Um, it's hard you. to forget. And I think that's probably most important, right? Yes. What's your why for doing this work? Why did you shift gears and what keeps you going? Yeah. So I think your why at the very beginning of business and the why once you're, I don't want to even say more established, but once you've gotten started in business is actually different. Um, so my first why I call the bus stop dream. And that is, so I started my business back in January of 2020. And by, when I say start a business, I was like, oh, I'm going to start a podcast and see what happens. I had no idea that it would turn into this. And so it's sort of morphed into this, like, oh, people are actually paying attention. This might actually have some legs and maybe I could do this to the pandemic had then sort of like come and it was a thing and the world was shutting down and I have twin girls and they were in kindergarten. And well, one, I always say like, I never want to repeat, uh, teaching kindergarten on zoom oh, ever again. Cause yeah. it was a lot, but oh. also I was working full time and all of a sudden it was like, I cannot keep doing what I'm doing right now for the next 10 years. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, the zoom calls were out of control. People didn't know how to handle, people being at home. We were not a virtual company. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just really, really stressful. And I was like, this, this is me sitting, my room did not look like this at the time. <laughs> I'm like me sitting in a guest bedroom working like in the dark <laughs> hours is not mm-hmm. life. Like this is not life. And so my first why was I want to be able to be the person that can put my girls on the bus, get them off the bus, like be productive and like give back to society, but in a way that aligns with our family goals and actually have a schedule that is okay, that you could like actually live every single day without like digging yourself into a hole. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first why of like, how do I make my schedule be like focused around my life. So I always say like a life priorities based business is the fastest way to scale because you're putting life first. So like, how do we take more vacations and put my girls on the bus stop and be able to go on a walk at two o'clock in the afternoon? Because I couldn't when I was working, you know, crazy hours. And so Mm -hmm. that was my first why, but my second why as like we began to grow is if your dreams only include yourself, they're too small. (laughs) And so I started being able to see, like, I, at this point I had like a couple of one-on-one clients and we had started our mastermind and I could see like people's families changing because Mm -hmm. of the work that we were doing. And I was like, Oh, this is what they mean when like, you know, you truly love your job because I mean, I've had clients that have now left their job or are doing their dream job or are putting their kids on the bus or, are you like running a marathon because they actually have time to train. And so to me, it's like the why at the beginning is like, what's getting you up and getting you moving. And then as you develop, it's like, well, how are you serving and helping and making your why bigger than just what it is for you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So I, I you know, I, this is going to, this will turn into somewhat of a coaching session, just so mm-hmm. you are aware, <laughs> because I hear so much in there that I have to question myself. And I think, first of all, I love um, a life priorities based business. And I think right now where I'm struggling and I'm curious, your thoughts is I have not ever been a corporate working mom. Mm -hmm. I worked corporate before I had children. Since having children, I have only ever been working for either the family business or for myself. And so to be quite honest, I, I, I don't miss my children. (laughs) (laughs) I am with them all the time. And it's only in the last year that they even are at school a couple of days a week. And anyway, my point is that I know rationally and I know big picture, like life priorities based business is the way to go. I know that I'm not going to want to be missing games and missing plays and doing all the things, but I'm struggling right now with feeling like I want to prioritize my business so much, but also dealing with like having toddlers and a life and, Mm -hmm. and but I almost feel like resentment over it. And I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but like, I guess, I guess when I started by saying I've never been like the corporate working mom is that I know a lot of people come into wanting to like re-strategize because they want more time with their children. And I'm almost Mm -hmm. like in the opposite situation. Like I want less time. Like, I, oh my God, that's horrible. It's horrible. But I, I just don't, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on, on hearing me say all of that? Yeah. I mean, I think everyone's why has to be different, right? So maybe your why is you want more time to yourself or you want more time to work on your business, or you want more time to figure out like what your business is and what, you know, what it should look like or strategize the next step. So I think, you know, not being the one that says I want more time with my kids is not wrong. Mm. It's just that it's different. Um, than what mine is, which is totally okay. But I think the number one thing you can do when you're looking to build a business is your goal has to be more than I want to make six figures because that's not motivating. Like it's a number and it feels like super far away and off. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, well, what is motivating? What's the thing that's, that's going to motivate you to, you know, work at 6am before you have to do whatever you have to do. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was, I want to be able to put my kids on the bus. 
I don't know what that looks like. Maybe I change jobs. Maybe I only work a couple of days a week. Maybe I start a business, but like, what's the, what's the goal? Do you want to take, like one of our family goals is we want to take quarterly vacations mm -hmm. and not just like going to grandma's, but like a legit, like I want to go to Europe and show the girls, the world, like a real vacation. Um, and that, that takes some, some strategy. And mm -hmm. so it's like, what's the thing that is going to motivate you. And it, ha it has to be visual. It has to be something that's emotional. It, for me, it's just not a number. Um, so that would be the first thing. And it's really different for everyone. And then the second thing I would say is when are you working on your business and when are you not? Because I think as an entrepreneur, you could literally work 24 seven. I mean, there's 8,000 things that I could do, but is that really going to bring me more profit? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but what does is when you have set times that you're working and you're super intentional and focused and strategic, and then when you're not working, you're doing things that you like to do, which mm -hmm. actually will give you more ideas about your business because you have time to be creative. You have time to slow down. You have time to not think about the numbers. Um, and it actually leads to making more profit. And it, it really doesn't make sense on paper, but, um, you know, it's important to understand that you need that downtime. Like you can't mm -hmm. just more work. It's not going to equal more success. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. And I think what comes to mind for me is I, I think a goal could be to actually feel like, feel like when I am with my kids, then I'm actually happy and willing to be present. Cause right now when I'm with them, it, feels like I have just like the motor going in the back of all the things that I could be doing or that I want to be doing. Um, and I think that's why when I said I was like maybe a little nervous, I think about this is because I've seen, you know, your stuff and the eight to 10 hour a week work week and, and all of that, like, that's me. And I think I've, I've, been actually resisting to do anything about it because I'm it's actually easier <laughs> in a lot of ways to just be upset that I only have eight to ten hours than it is mm. to actually take steps to make those eight to ten hours more efficient or just like fulfilling really yeah. I mean, you really don't need more than that because if you look at, so like one of the things that I teach is let's figure out what your eight to 10 hour work week looks like. So for me, when I was working full time, I basically had one hour a week, typically before work that I could work on my business sometimes too. It just depends on the week. And then on Saturday I had what I called my strategic session, which is just my theory that sometimes you need more than 20 minutes at a time. Yeah. So during the week, like Monday through Friday, it's like 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. We're just like getting through it. But then on Saturdays, and it can be any day, but Saturdays is what I still use to this day. I would take two to three hours and just really think about like, what do I need to do? Where are things at? What makes the most sense? And like, you're like just taking a, a, a higher look at things. Like you're getting mm -hmm. out of the weeds. Mm -hmm. And then on Sundays, I would take about a half hour, um, to an hour to plan. And by plan, it's like, what's happening this week from a family perspective? What's happening from a business perspective? How's it all going to fit together? Um, and so that added up to about eight to 10 hours a week. But then I layered on what I like to call theme days. And that is because at 6am, no one wants to think about, oh, what do I want to do? Yeah. And so what I would do is be like, hey, uh, Monday is going to be content day because at the beginning of business, like content is everything. It's going to do the heavy lifting for you. It's going to create and position yourself as an authority. So if you're stuck or you don't know what to do, you have to create content. And so I would always do that first. Um, and then some days I would have like a podcast recording day or a client day. And so I knew if I only had one hour, that's all I was going to do. And if I was having a day where I was thinking of, oh my God, I have all these things I need to do, I would just put them on the day that I was going to do it. So if you're mm. building a website, maybe you have a website day and maybe you're like in the car and you're like, oh, I need to do these like 12 things for my website. Well, just put them on a list and then revisit it when you have time for your website day. Mm -hmm. uh, so between the business hours and the 
you know, theme days, it really just came down to just being really, really consistent. Like I have not missed a day on this schedule for almost three years now. Wow. Um, and so it comes down to most people won't be consistent. And if you are, you're going to make progress. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so, <laughs> okay. So this, my show, you, you know, is, is also about mental health and, you know, I, I occasionally will battle some depression, some anxiety and how, how do I not miss a day <laughs> to use like your way of like saying like you yeah. haven't missed a day when maybe I wake up and I'm, I'm depressed that day or just don't feel like doing something or feel like, Hey, today's supposed to be my content day, but I'm the day before my period and I feel like uh, garbage and I can't yeah. think straight or one of the kids didn't sleep through the night and now I'm foggy. Like how, how do you work through those, those challenges that are inevitably, inevitably going to happen? Yeah. I mean, there's two ways. The one way is, you know, you've got that vision, right? So I'm like, well, Hey, if I want to actually be the person that can put my kids on the bus or take them on vacation, like I'm going to have to just work through it. Mm -hmm. Like it's not hard, but it's not easy. So there's kind of like that, but then there's also, okay, I've got these theme days and Monday I just feel awful, right? Like I didn't sleep. My kids didn't sleep, whatever is going on. So I'm going to maybe do something that's a little bit easier if you wanted to, right? So maybe it's not writing content, but maybe it's doing something that you enjoy. That's still a business activity or because it's only an hour, just be like, you know what? I'm just going to rest today. And tomorrow I'm going to do two hours. Cause I know I'm going to feel better and I can adjust my schedule. And so you, you could skip a day, right? It's not designed so that you're a robot, but you know, Hey, I've got five hours of, of work that I need to do this week. Maybe it's two hours on Tuesday and three hours on Wednesday. And then I take the rest of the week off. Mm -hmm. It kind of just depends on what you want it to be. Um, I have a lot of clients who are nurses who work like 12 or 14 hour shifts. Mm. And so for them, it's like, you know, it's not, I don't have an hour in a day. And after working a 14 hour shift, like you're not going to want to go home and write content. Right. <laughs> so it's like, Hey, get some sleep, schedule your week around. You know what? If I work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then Tuesday, Thursday from two to four, that's when I'm going to do my business hours. Mm -hmm. So it's just being strategic and looking at like, even just looking at your calendar on Sundays and saying, um, you know what? I know that these days are super heavy days from like a kid perspective or schedule perspective, or, you know, maybe you're looking at your cycle and you're like, I know this week is not going to be the greatest. So I'm going to do these projects instead. And so it's just being intentional with it. But knowing, I mean, eight hours a week is almost 412 hours a year. So if you can structure it in a way where you're just really trying to get that eight hours in, like you will make progress and it's not going to be perfect every week. Of course, there's like vacation or things that comes up. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's the consistency. The consistency is what's going to create that momentum and that's what's going to keep you going. Mm hmm. Okay. So what are the signs for you that you start to see when maybe it's time to, you know, reevaluate, right? Like you've been working a certain way for a couple of weeks, or you've picked these themes based on what's going on. When do you start to see, oh, you know what, we gotta, we gotta maybe pivot and switch this up. What are some things you look for? Yeah. So there's actually two things I do. So one, at least one day of the week, I have what I call my CEO day and it's an hour or two. Um, and I don't have anything planned. So mm -hmm. it's a day for me to be like, Hey, is this working? Is this not working? Do I need to catch up on something? Did I have a bad day earlier in the week? And now I need an hour to do something like, so it's kind of like a catch all to just do like a little check-in of what's working, what's not working. Um, but the other thing that I do on Sunday, and this is in our planner every week is ask myself three questions and that I call them the, the weekly wows. And so it's what's working well. So if it's working well, we're, we want to keep doing it, right? Like we want to take note and say, oh, this was a great day this week. Why was it a great day? Um, what do I need to improve on? So lately for me, like I cannot, like my alarm goes off and I'm like, 
I hit snooze like a thousand times. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm not hitting snooze this week. It's just being intentional of like, what's working well, what can I improve on? Mm -hmm. And then I like to ask myself, like, what is the thing can, that can make next week great? Like if I could do something and I would feel amazing at the end of the week, what would that be? And so instead of like thinking, oh, like once a quarter, I'm going to slow down and look at what I'm doing. I say, you know, at least once a week, ask yourself those questions and it's going to help you see like what's working, what's not working and what do you need to do differently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that because, um, you know, I, I recently I've gotten a couple of planners and like I tried like the Phoenix Journal and things um, where there is a an expectation that you'll be checking in daily and that I, I'm finding that doesn't work for me <laughs> because I have you know Monday Wednesday Friday my day looks completely different than Tuesday Thursday when my kids are home all day mm -hmm. and I so I sometimes get in this rut of if because it's not I'm not in like that mode on Tuesdays and Thursdays so I won't check in on Tuesday and then maybe Wednesday gets away from me and then I'm not checking in on Thursday and the next thing you know it's Friday and maybe Friday is like a vacation day and then I'm back to Monday and I'm like great I'm feeling defeated that I've missed you know these four or five days of following the plan <laughs> yeah and you know I would say every day is different but I do think giving yourself a 30 second check-in every day is actually going to help. Mm. Um, and it doesn't always have to be business, but it can be like with our planner, it's like every single day, what are the, just the three things that I want to do today? It doesn't mm. have to be business related. It's just, let's just keep it really simple. What are three things that I need to get done today? It could all be non-business related, or it could all be business related depending on your day. Mm -hmm. But to me, if I wake up and I don't have that, like, again, it takes 30 seconds check in, then I don't have a direction. And I always say like, I live in Ohio and if I was, you know, flying to let's just say California, cause it's warm and sunny, that would be amazing. But if I didn't check the direction while I was flying, because it's like a, you know, five hour flight, like I could end up in Alaska doesn't mean that I'm not moving. It just means that I'm not moving in the right direction. <laughs> and it's only like a couple degrees off. Right. Yeah. So you have to have, I think you, it's so important that you have yeah. those check-ins, um, or you could be moving, but moving in the wrong direction. <laughs> okay. I like that. That was good. Um, and, and, you know, you're, so your twins now are, how old are they now? Uh, they're nine. They're nine. And you started this, you said when they were in kindergarten. Um, so still school age, but curious, you know, I'm, I've got toddlers, none of which are in kindergarten yet. And there is this part of me that believes that a lot of this will get quote unquote easier when they are both in kindergarten and upwards. And I'm wondering either based on your personal experience or experience, I'm sure with clients who have kids, like either what do I have to look forward to in that shift? Or am I just kidding myself? No, I mean, I definitely think that it gets easier. Um, it's just different. Like there's just different. I mean, as a parent, I feel like your children always will need your attention at some point in time. It's just a different type of uh, attention. So yeah. like when they were in kindergarten, well, before the pandemic hit, it was like, oh, they're actually out of the house for a couple yeah. hours a oh day. God, this is awesome. The pandemic with um, but then that Ooh. all changed. And so we just had to be super intentional about like where we were spending our time and, and where they were getting attention. I mean, when they were in kindergarten, could I do a podcast when they were home? Probably not. Or I had to have my husband like make sure that they were fine yeah. when they're in third grade. Can I do it when they're home? Yes. Like it's yeah. fine. Um, so it's just different. It's just, you know, thinking through what they need and, and when they need it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, recently, uh, you, know, you had the unfortunate experience of your Instagram being hacked and having to start over. And I know you also have the ditch, the social drama, like talk to me a little bit about, social media and how this plays into everything we've been talking about what's ditching the social drama and why is it important 
Yeah. So, I mean, it goes back to my background and that was, you know, I was in an executive role and I didn't, I couldn't post on social media (laughs) 10 times a day. It just wasn't possible. Um, and it, because I was in corporate and I, at the time I wasn't quite sure how they were going to respond to me having a business. Like it just, it wasn't a, I couldn't do it. Like it Mm -hmm. it was a limit, not maybe a limiting belief, but it was a barrier that I had to overcome. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, if I, if I only have an hour a day, like I don't want to spend that hour on social media. I actually want to do something that's, I can guarantee is going to get me in front of the right people at the right time. So I call it my antisocial strategy. It does not mean that I don't use social media, but we use social media in a way where it's like a magazine. So Mm -hmm. if you're listening to this podcast or any podcast, what do you do? You go look that person up, right? Mm -hmm. It's normal. Like it's fine. So I just make sure that I have content there that aligns with what I'm speaking at which for us personally is 95% repurposed from other areas. So I like to think of social media as like the second act. It's Mm -hmm. like the sidecar, the, um, like the honey in your tea. Like it's just different. It's not the first thing, right? So for us, the first thing has, has been legacy content. And when I say legacy content, that means content that you own that is going to last forever. So it could be blog posts or podcasts or things that are your words that are searchable that don't disappear because I mean, you've all heard the facts that I think it might be up to 5% of your followers see your post on social. (laughs) So I'm like, let's look at the statistics. I have an email open rate of like 40% right now, or I have because we had to restart our social media, 200 people on social media where 2% are going to see it. So do I want to spend an hour writing an email or do I want to spend an hour writing a post for social media? Mm -hmm. My answer right now is both, but it's because I'm repurposing it. So I created a um, structure that really teaches you how to build, build your business in a way that is going to last the long term and how you don't have to depend on social media. So our account went down and knock on wood. I mean, we still are rebuilding, but it hasn't, hasn't impacted us at all. Like not at all. And if anything, I would say it's actually been a blessing in disguise because now I feel like I truly have like a case study. Like I'm my own case study of, Mm -hmm. you know what? We just had like a 20 K launch without social media. Like I couldn't even scroll, like it wasn't even an option. And so I think just being able to teach that is something I'm so passionate about because I mean, I just, I I like social media. I have a very healthy relationship with it now, but I did not at the beginning. Um, and I think, you know, as you talk about mental health and just thinking about kids and social media and the future and all the things that it does, that's negative. Like Mm -hmm. my goal is let's make it positive. Like let's use it in a way where it works for us, where we have a healthy relationship with it and build a business where you don't have to be online to make an impact and to make money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hearing you talk about your beliefs on social media and how you're building your business, everything you just said about that, talking about you really don't need more than eight to 10 hours a week to scale a business. These are not what I understand to be typically held beliefs, right? You, you, especially if you go on social media, you've got people all day long telling you how you need to be on social media. That's the way of the world. This is where we're going. Or just, you know, the, the hustle culture of you have to be working ridiculous hours and up all night. And if you want to build your business, it's every day at 5 a.m. and the whole nine yards. And what I'm getting at is where does the confidence come for you? Where did, like, put, put yourself back. Like, where did that come for you as far as saying, you know what? No, <laughs> we're not going to do it this way because I don't know. I, I, I don't typically uh, consider myself a person lacking in confidence, but in this area, I'm newer and it feels hard to like sift out all of the information to sort of confidently come to my own conclusion. So I'm curious where that comes from for you. Is that personality? Like, what is it? Yeah. Um, you know, I would actually say it probably goes back to the why, 
And mm -hmm. if I'm building my business and working full time, every time I would get my phone out or my laptop out, my family would look at me and be like, oh, she's working again. Right. Huh. Mm -hmm. And like my kids act totally different when I'm sitting like on my phone versus when I'm present with them. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, if we're going to do this, like if we're going to build this business in a way that's going to support our family goals, then that has to be one of them. One, because I didn't have the time to be on social all the time, but two, I could see my kids reaction when I would pick up my phone or if I'm typing and they're not getting an answer from me or whatever that was. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, if I'm going to get my family behind me working full time <laughs> and running a business, I need to do it in a way where they're not resentful of me working all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it started with that. But then I think like, you know, I still use social media. So it's not like I'm not on social, but it's just very planned and strategic and repurposed so that I have a presence, but it's a presence that I'm controlling mm -hmm. instead of, I don't know what to do. I'm going to scroll all day. I'm going to feel awful about myself because I'm not doing all these things. No one's seeing my content. No one's liking it. I mean, you could just go down a rabbit hole where you just feel awful about what yeah. you're doing. And like, if you take a 24 hour break from all social, I mean, you, you feel like a different person. Like there's a reason why people recommend that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I just like to be very intentional with where I spend my time. And it, I mean, it really comes back to like how it impacts me and my family. And I think that's probably where the confidence came from, because I knew going back to the question I asked at the beginning, can I keep doing this for 10 years? Do I want to spend four to five hours on a social media app for the next 10 years every day? No. Yeah. Um, and so it's just asking yourself, well, what do you want? Like, what do you really want? Like, what do you want your day to look like? Um, yeah. Like even this morning, like before this podcast interview, we're going out of town next week. And so I batched my content. Like I was like, okay, I'm going to write three podcasts. I'm going to record two reels and it's all done. Like I did it in two hours because I was intentional about what I want to talk about, what I'm doing. And the confidence comes from doing it consistently over time. Mm -hmm. I was just having a conversation this morning with Shade Kelly. And one of the things that came up was actually defining for yourself what consistency means, right? Like it came up, like we typically think of consistency as showing up every day, but maybe it's not every day or it's not every day in the same capacity and really getting clear on what consistency means for, for you as a person, for your business. Um, and it just, it makes me think of that, of, of what you're saying, like just, well, I'm probably just because I'm still processing both of these conversations now in real time about how I'm going to apply all this to my life, because it's, it's hard. It's hard, you know, juggling it all and feeling like I wish, wishing like I had more time for each thing. And I don't. So. Yeah. I mean, time is not something that we can create. And so I think going back to just sort of the theme is like, be intentional of where you want to spend it. And going back to those weekly questions, like what's working mm -hmm. if you're, um, posting and no one is liking or responding, then we need to try something else. Yeah. Um, like just because it worked for Sally down the street doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And I think that's what, you know, people want this like secret sauce answer. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't have the secret sauce answer. There is no secret sauce, but I can tell you if you're consistent with something and you're consistently asking yourself, is this working or is this not working? Then you can pivot, right? So that when you take that plane flight, you land in California and not <laughs> Alaska. Yeah. Not that Alaska is bad, um, yeah. but where do you want to go? Right. Right. Yeah. And if I'm honest, the, uh, the social media often is, is about getting that immediate, like gratification or that immediate, mm -hmm. immediate hit of, whoa, there's someone, <laughs> someone yeah. noticing what I'm doing. Um, but not necessarily converting in any way. Right. Um, right. And so honestly, I was looking at my statistics. I always say, look at the facts. The facts are going to give you signs of what's working. So if I looked at my statistics, I'm like, well, where are my clients coming from? My clients are coming from 
where I'm having conversations, which is coming from podcasts or workshops or networking events that I've done. Eventually they're coming to Instagram, but that's the second phase, right? Mm -hmm. Or they find me on Instagram and I've got this, you know, magazine of what I do intentionally posted there. And then they go into, Hey, I'm going to listen to your podcast, or I'm going to go listen to you talk. So they're getting to know me as like a real person. And that's, what's turning them into, okay, I know Holly, I know that she's a real person and, you know, she's sharing these facts and Hey, I have twins too. And whatever the, mm. the things are, and they mm -hmm. relate to you as a person instead of just like scrolling past whatever your content is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what's another thing <laughs> personally that I have struggled with, and I, I wonder if you have ideas on this. I don't currently sell anything. I really right now just want people to come listen to the show. And I often feel like it, I, I, perhaps this is a limiting belief, but that it is hard to convert people from another platform to a podcast, like by posting on Pinterest or posting on, you know, social media that I'm not often getting the, the conversion to the show. And I, another, another limiting belief, we'll just keep throwing them in there is that because I don't have something to sell, I often find that my like focus on what to post is or what to share or what to create is like a little scattered. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like I understand the funnel. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the number one piece of advice that I would give, um, regardless of what platform you're sharing off of. So email, social podcast, blog, whatever, is you have to know who you serve. It has to be super clear. It has to be so clear that if your neighbor asked you what you did for your business, you could explain it in two sentences. So that's step number one is, so I could be like, um, well, I'm Holly Haynes and I help female entrepreneurs build a full-time business on a part-time schedule without relying on the social algorithm. And then my neighbor is going to be like, oh, what does that mean? Right. So you have to be able to have that. It's honestly probably the hardest step because you have to, everyone says niche down. I say like, who is your ideal unicorn client? Like think of that like person that could fly into your inbox. You would like be like, oh my God, I, I would love to help her. Who is that? It's and how do you describe, <laughs> right? How do you describe <laughs> how yeah. that, how you work with them? So yeah. that's step number one. And then step number two is what are their struggles? What are they struggling with? And then how do you solve those? Mm -hmm. So I actually have this exercise. I call it the 30, 30 exercise and it, it takes a minute, but you've got your help statement. And then on one side of the paper, it's like, here are 30 things that that unicorn is struggling with. And then here are 30 ways that I can like magically help them. Mm. And that is going to give you, this is what I'm super passionate about. This is what I want to teach. That's going to give you your content. Mm -hmm. And then based on that content, you can start to think about how to monetize it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, on the flip side of this, I do also work with my family and part of even this podcast is run with my family. My uncle is my editor. My mom um, has a, her own podcast. So I'm constantly kind of working with her team. What's it like wor for you working with your family? How do you, you know, keep up boundaries if you need to put them up between work and life? And what's it like to work with your husband? And, and how do you guys, I don't know, keep keep things separate or do you keep things separate? What do you guys do? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We're new into it. So we're in it for like a probably year, year and a half now. Um, and it's, a, it's evolved. Um, we have to have rules and boundaries. So like if I have a lot of calls during the day and he wants to like dig into our like financial quarterly plan <laughs> at seven o'clock at night, I'm like, this is not a good time because I'm, I'm done. Like my brain is like mush. Mm -hmm. Um, so we treat it like a business. Like we have, um, meetings every Monday where we go through, um, Hey, what's the plan for the week? What's like, what's our financial status? Uh, so we treat it like a business. 
there's definitely some blurry lines of like, well, can we really talk about this 24 seven, which some days we do. And it's like, okay, we got to take a break. Um, so it's just, I think healthy communication and treating it like a business. Like we have operation meetings, we have financial meetings. Um, we're trying to like set what are our, what's his role versus what's my role. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, really, I mean, it's a business The that piece is, is a business and you have to be able to know, um, what each person is doing and be able to communicate clearly with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, one thing that I always like to ask people about is self-care and, you know, outside of the business, how, how do you take care of yourself and how do you make sure that you actually do it and follow through? Yeah. I mean, it actually goes back to the schedule, um, that I was talking about at the beginning. And that is one, I always have a CEO day every single week and the CEO day is a day where I do not have meetings. And so it's a day for me to be like, okay, this is what I need to work on. But also it's a day for me personally to be like, this is what's working. This is what's not working. Um, this is what I need to do more of. This is what I need to do less of. And then I really try to stick to the boundaries of working hours. So like typically around three o'clock is when I will stop working. It's when my girls get home from school. Um, I try not to be on my phone or anything after seven o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try now to make sure that I do something for myself first in the morning. And then I actually schedule everything comes down to schedule. Um, <laughs> I will schedule white space in my calendar. Like I will say, okay, the last two days of every month where there's no meetings or we're going to go, um, for an extra long walk or whatever the thing is, Mm -hmm. but it really comes down to, you've got to create that white space so that you have the freedom to do what feels good for you, which is going to be different, right? Based on how you're feeling. Some days you might not feel like doing anything. Um, and that's okay because you've got that white space in your calendar that will reflect that. So, I mean, my biggest piece of advice is create the schedule that you want right now. Like Mm -hmm. it might not be perfect, but you know, I would say when I worked full time, I was like, how do I not have meetings on Friday? And so I would just strategically move things away. Mm -hmm. So now I don't have meetings on Friday, but like, what's one thing you can do to create that like dream schedule now. So you have the capacity to, you know, live the life that you want to live and not wait for it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What are the ways that, you know, someone listening to this is like, yes, I'm all in, sign me up. What are the ways that people are are currently able to work with you? Yeah. Um, so I have a lot of different ways. I would say the best way is if you are interested in truly learning the eight to 10 hour work week schedule, um, I have, it's free. It's a five day challenge. And I actually teach you how to do it. Like I am Hmm. in your inbox telling you what to do. You can ask me questions. I'm, I'm the one answering them. Um, it's hollymariehaines.com forward slash CEO week. So it's really teaching you to be the CEO of your life. Um, that's step one. If you're interested in learning more about building a business without being reliant on social media, you could just go to hollymariehaines.com forward slash social. Um, and it, I have a private podcast. I love podcasting and I teach you the framework. It's totally free. Um, so either social or CEO week, you can grab those resources and see, um, what resonates the best with you. Cool. Cool. Has anything about your podcasting journey for lack of a better way, like what, what do you, what's anything surprised you now that you're doing it longer and what are you getting out of it? What, what do you like about it? What do you want to do differently with it? I don't know. Just curious, kind of like podcaster. Yeah. I mean, the podcast, the podcast started out as just like, just a little like a pet project. I'm like, Oh, this sounds fun. I'm going to try it. And it has turned into like nothing that I could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, I, the reason I think that it has is because we've been consistent. So I would say most podcasters will start and do two to three, five episodes. And then they're like, Oh, this is a decent amount of work. 
I'm going to take a pause and they never come back. Mm -hmm. So if you have like 50 episodes, I think you're in the, like the top 5% of podcasters because most people don't keep going. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to win the game of consistency here, going back to like (laughs) our theme. And we went from one episode to two episodes and then we started repurposing the content, right? So it's just working smarter. So the podcast content now goes to like Pinterest and a blog and social media and LinkedIn. And I can't even remember all the different places, SEO. And the the podcast basically does all the heavy lifting for me. So I spend my time podcasting because that's what I love to do. And I make the content uh, work for me. So Mm -hmm. whatever you do, I think it goes back to being consistent and being strategic about, hey, this is a great way to spend my time. And then you can leverage different strategies to bring customers in through having conversations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just uh, to clarify, when you started and you developed the framework of the eight to 10 hour work week is this designed for a solopreneur or is like how you know what I'm saying like is this designed yeah is this designed for a solopreneur or is this designed assuming that you are able to sort of delegate and offload certain tasks because just thinking of podcasting alone just the back end like production side is it's a whole thing so I'm just wondering if for you was were you started you know, I know you had your husband, I guess you started with your husband, you said, but so it's like, actually at the beginning, it was just me. So I just recently, um, have a, I have a team now, but at the beginning it was all me. So the eight to 10 hour work week is designed for the tasks that you specifically need to do. Okay. So if you're a solopreneur, you can do it. If you have a team, these are the tasks that you need to do. And you can start to think about what you want to outsource. But at the beginning it was, it was all me. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah. Th- that's good to know. I-, I think because, you know, it's uh, just like I said, just thinking about podcasting alone, I think, like you said, most people don't realize all the back end stuff that goes into it. It's mm-hmm. like, yes, you and I are going to have this conversation for an hour, but there was an hour of emails before, and then there's going to be the editing and the graphics and uploading to the source and it's like it's the show notes like it's a it's a lot of time (laughs) yeah right which goes back to what's working and what's not and so I knew that podcasting was working I could see it working behind the scenes so I knew that that's where Mm -hmm. um I needed to spend my time yeah okay and then you do you, you still run and have the the community, like the, the membership community. Yeah. So I have multiple levels that, um, you can work with me. The, the, one of the first things that I did was create the crush the rush club. Um, so it's a membership. And the reason why I created a membership model is because at the beginning of business, we don't have 10 to $20,000 to invest in learning how to set up a business. Um, And then once you get started, so the membership is designed for those that have a business, but are at the very beginning and are like, what do I do next? Or if you've been in business for a while and you're like, I'm stuck, I don't know how to scale. That's really who I serve. And so Mm -hmm. you're able to dig into a lot of the resources that I use. I literally share them in real time as we uh, create them. Mm -hmm. But then we've got the live component where we have office hours where you get access to me and I can ask questions, strategic questions to you to help you make decisions on what to do next. And then we also do um, planning parties, right? So going Mm -hmm. through that eight to 10 hour work week live, we do it once a month. Um, and we have content planning and just, you know, the things that you need to do to, to run a business, but holding you accountable, uh, to do it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Holly, is there anything about your work, your philosophies, who you are that you wish I would have asked you today that I didn't think to? No, I mean, I think you, the questions have been amazing and I would go back to the beginning and I think it's really important if you're a business owner and you're dabbling into entrepreneurship, like why are you doing it? Because it's not hard, but it's not easy. And I always say like, if nothing changes, nothing changes. 
So have the framework in place and the roadmap in place. So you're going the direction that you want to go. Um, and that's going to help you the best, the most. Okay. All right. Well, you have given me a lot to think about and I'm going to, um, link some of the resources that you shared, you know, which will be easy because I'm about to go <laughs> download them myself. So I'll just have yeah, the take right a right there. Um, but thank you so, so much for your time. I really appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. What did you think? Oh my gosh. I love this stuff so much. And it is so relevant to me right now. I need all of this. I want to just, oh my gosh, I just want to take Holly's brain and make it mine for a minute. (laughs) Since I can't do that. And since I've got jobs for you to do, let's get right to it. Number one, check back in on Friday for my recap, thoughts, reflections, and to learn how I've implemented what I've learned from Holly. And warning, it's a lot. I did leave that conversation and sign up for her free CEO week. I also left that conversation and downloaded the free podcast series that she has on ditching the social media drama. And I have so many thoughts. I have not even been able to fully implement everything that I have learned between our interview and all these follow-up avenues, but I have changed and implemented a lot already. And if nothing else, I just have a different mindset. And now I am, okay, I'm taking this too far. So number two, check out my social media to learn more about the theme for this month, productivity, ambition, and mental health. And number three, if you want a chance to ask these incredible experts, including Holly, your questions, make sure you head over to sassays.com slash panel and sign up to join us live on Zoom on May 31st, 1 p.m. Eastern. You must visit sassays.com slash panel and sign up in order to get the Zoom link for this event. All right. I'll see you Friday. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in today. SAS Says is a production of Luann Nigara, Inc. This podcast is meant to be educational and not meant to replace professional therapy or professional medical attention. To learn more about today's show and what's new in my world, head over to sassays.com. Thanks so much. Talk later. Talk later.